Soft clipping is a type of distortion, which can occur naturally when working with certain types of analog systems. As an example, this distortion can occur when sending an input signal through a tube amplifier, or printing a signal onto analog tape. These systems will tame the peaks of our signal by rolling them off in a nice, smooth, gradual way. This is different from the type of distortion that occurs with hard clipping. We can recreate this type of distortion digitally by using different mathematical functions. What we're going to look at is first how we can use a cubic function, and then how we can use an arc tangent function. So let's jump into MATLAB and look at how we can create our own soft clipping functions. Here in MATLAB, I'm going to demonstrate a couple different ways to perform soft clipping. I'm going to end up writing two different functions. The first function will be one type of soft clipping based on cubic distortion. The second function will be based on a different type of soft clipping based on arc tangent distortion. I'm going to reuse this script that I created previously for testing the different distortion algorithms. First thing is I'm going to open up a brand new M file for our cubic distortion function. So I'll give it the keyword at the top that this is a special type of M file. It's going to pass in and out a couple different variables or arguments. So I have an output signal that gets created. I'm going to give the name of this function cubic distortion. Initially, we'll just pass in our input signal to be processed. So I'll save this file. I'm going to reuse some of the code that I had previously. So I'll copy over this code to perform a loop, goes through each sample of our input signal. Inside of this loop, each time through, we're going to create a new sample for our output signal. Say that our output signal at time sample n is equal to, in this case, a couple of things. First, we're going to have the uh, unprocessed input signal that we're blending in with a distorted signal. So by itself, this is just the original signal. We're going to subtract off. Our cubic distortion is based on taking our input signal and raising it to the power of 3. And we'll also add a scaling factor in here of 1 third multiplied by our input signal cubed. This is our function that we'll use for cubic distortion. And come back over here to our distortion test and look at how this function will work. So I'll say our output signal is equal to cubic distortion for our input signal. I'll run the script and we can look at the result comparing the input to the output. Our input signal is in blue. We can see in red, that's our distorted signal, where the peaks have been rounded off. We gradually soft clip the amplitude as it gets higher. One more thing that I'm going to add in here is a way to control the amount of distortion. We can use a new variable that allows us to blend in the amount of distortion we like. So I'll say that A initially here has a value of zero. A will have a range, possible range. We'll put it in a comment here. It's for the amount. When it's a value of zero, that means no distortion. And up to a value of one, which is full distortion. Let's go over here to our cubic distortion function and see how we could make use of this variable. So open up this one. We're going to pass it in as an additional argument or variable to our function that we can use. Currently, in our algorithm, we have the original unprocessed signal, and then we have the distorted signal that we're blending in together. Therefore, if we use this variable A as an amount that we're blending in the distortion, so if this value is zero, this entire term will go to zero, and we'll just have the input signal without being distorted, so no distortion. As A increases up to a value of one, then we'll reach our full level of distortion. We have one third multiplied by our input signal cubed. Anything in between is just we're blending in more of this uh, part of our distortion. So coming back over here, we have a equal to zero. We pass this into our function. 
can look at the output. In this case, the output should be equal to the input. That's exactly what we see in our plot. So we increase this to 0.5. See that we start to roll off the peaks. And as this goes up to one, that's our full amount of distortion. So now we've written a function for performing cubic distortion and also gives us a variable control of the amount of distortion we want to use. Next, let's move on to writing our second function that's based on arctangent distortion. So we'll come back to this test script in a second. So say that we're going to write a new function, has an output argument. This is arctangent distortion. In this case, we'll pass in our input signal. We're also going to pass in another variable that controls the amount. In this case, I'm going to give it a different name, alpha. And that's because alpha is going to be on a different range than we used before. So instead of just 0 to 1, alpha can be a wider range. So here, let's put in our loop that we saw before. We're processing each sample individually. We want to create our output signal. Now let's look at the arctangent function. This is based on a built-in function that we can use in MATLAB, ATAN for arctangent. We'll pass in our input signal, and we're also going to multiply it by this scaling factor alpha. It's going to increase the amplitude or decrease the amplitude of our input signal that's going into the function. We'll also make sure that we're indexing the uh, uh, current sample here. Then I'm going to put in a way to uh, control the gain for our function. Put in a factor here, 2 divided by pi. Use that to scale here the output of the arctangent function. So we'll save that file. Come back over to our distortion test. Comment out our cubic distortion and experiment with different values of alpha. Why don't we start out with a value of 0 0.5? In this case, our output is going to be arctangent distortion based on our input signal and alpha. So let's run this script and look at our result. So in this case, we have uh, started to change the amplitude of our signal. And in this case, we're not doing a whole lot of distortion to it. Now let's increase alpha value of one. We can continue up from here. Value of two. Right, we're starting to see that we are rounding off the amplitude of our input signal and even go higher. So alpha of five. You can see that not only are we going to round off the peaks, but we're also affecting or distorting the signal when it has a lower amplitude. Go up to a value of 10. And for this type of function, as we increase alpha higher and higher from 10 and above, we start to approach that our soft clipping starts to approach infinite clipping, where the signal, as it goes above a value of zero, it's going to get close to a value of one. As it drops below zero, it gets closer to a value of minus one. So this is a way we're able to go from kind of a gradual, smooth type of soft clipping up to more extreme type of a hard clipping or infinite clipping there. So now we've written two different functions in MATLAB, cubic distortion and arctangent distortion that are able to perform soft clipping.